Will you go on a date with me? <laughs> will you marry me? Or will you be my mentor? But almost, I think, two months ago, a girl came to me in our club and said, Zen, will you mentor me? I said, why not? As Lewis said, I already do it for everyone. Why not do it in a different way? What was different about this time was because I was doing this new program, Pathways, and there is a whole mentoring section there. And I finally learned how proper mentoring works. And I realized that a lot of things that I have been doing in the past cannot be called mentoring. They can be called more like, do it my way. <laughs> and that's not how mentoring is supposed to work. So Alicia, that you just saw on stage, came to me and said that then I have to prepare my icebreaker. That's the first speech in a club that you give, which is supposed to introduce yourself to the club. I want to prepare it and I want to do it good. I said, okay, I think everyone that wants to or uh, does join our club has this target of giving a great icebreaker. So first thing, we scheduled it. If it were me, I scheduled it one week later, then like Yash or many other people in our club, Alicia decided, no, she needs a month to prepare. So she scheduled it one month in advance. And then we worked. We discussed what she wants to do, what is uh, her targeting for this speech, and now, for those of you who have heard, you may already know, but we have one guest. So you may not know that Alicia already creates YouTube videos. So she has her own YouTube channel. So it's public speaking is not something that she's doing for the very first time in our club. But she told me there's one challenge. When you're creating a video, you can cut it, edit it, keep the good parts, throw out the ones that you don't like. In public speaking, when you're stage, there is no such option. Prepare all, you have to be clear about what you want to say because there is no redoing it. So she was a bit nervous about that. We discussed what she's going to talk about. I, of course, said, you know, it's an icebreaker, don't take it too seriously. It's all about yourself. Just tell what your passions are, what you what you do in your life, why you join Toastmasters, and things like that. And she said, okay, I will talk about my YouTube channel and what I learned from that. And she came up with a couple of topics. Great, everything was going great. Then about two weeks before her speech, I got an email. In the email, I got the whole draft of her speech as we agreed that she would send me and I will review it and send her some comments. And I started to read this speech. It was a great speech. It was not what I wanted. And that was my first thought. No, this is not a nice breaker. You know, as I already mentioned before, what I want is emotions. What I want is your stories, your passions, your fears, your dreams. And I felt that Alicia is not expressing them in this icebreaker. And I should tell her that she should do something different. So that was my very first thought and very strong thought. Now, if I had not read about mentoring at this point, that is exactly what I would have done. <laughs> the result would have been because I am an experienced Toastmaster, so I kind of have authority in the eyes of a new member, the new member would do what I say. <laughs> when she will do what I say, when she didn't feel comfortable with it, when she it didn't come from herself, it wouldn't go very well. So, it wouldn't work. And that's what has happened in the past. But this time I tried a different approach. It's not for me to decide what Alicia should do. It's her icebreaker. It's her goal. She has to achieve it in her own way. All I can do is give her helpful suggestions to achieving her goal. So I reviewed the speech from a different perspective. I reviewed it just like I would review any other speech. Did it make sense? Did it have a clear message? Were there some things to improve? And of course, I gave her some tips and suggestions, which she gladly took and even implemented in a very short amount of time while she was in Russia enjoying the World Cup. I don't know how she found the time, but she managed to incorporate all those changes that I mentioned to her in her icebreaker. Now, maybe you were there one week ago, or one and a half, two weeks ago, when she gave her icebreaker. Maybe you were not, but one thing is for sure. The icebreaker was absolutely amazing. It was Alicia's icebreaker. It was her own thoughts and words put in a nice way in front of us. We got to learn who she is, what she thinks about her YouTube channel, 
what are her skills, and whatsoever she wanted to say. That was one of the best icebreakers that I have heard in the last two years in our club. What can you take away from this? We'll all get the opportunity to mentor someone. If you're good at something, people will come to you. At work, in personal life, they will ask you to mentor them. When they ask you to do that, most of the time they're not looking for you to tell them what they want, what they should do next. What they're looking for is support, help, and those small technical things that you know better because of your experience. That's all you need to do. You need to help them achieve their goals, not yours. You're not there to solve their problem for them. You're there to show them the right way so that they can solve it by themselves. That's how mentoring is supposed to work. For me, this whole experience has been enlightening. I finally know what mentoring looks like. That's what I'm going to pursue more because the next part of this project is to mentor someone for six months and in various goals together. That's going to be a challenge. But I know that with this experience, I have some insights and I will do it better next time. Thank you. <laughs>